So, how many of you took the National Day Parade we back? No one gave me tickets. <laughs> no one. I think one of you had it. Do you recognize this in your bag? So, he's basically going to talk about it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so just an uh, introduction in case some of you are not aware about Singapore's history. <laughs> yeah, so oh my yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, okay, so okay, I'm doing this today, okay. So we get independence from Malaysia in 9 August. <laughs> okay, so we recently celebrated our 51st birthday. <laughs> and then uh, this event was held at the, the Nibiru National Stadium. Okay. 40 million. Yeah, so you can see the National Stadium actually is indoor, it's the indoor stadium here. Okay, so actually the uh, like Singaporean stuff there's always goodie packs uh, when it comes to the National Day Parade. So I went to this uh to the preview, not the actual one. So the preview is actually a real saw. So it was held on 30 July. So inside this bag, right, there's actually this LED wristband, which I'm passing around now. Okay, so I just show you a quick video of how this band actually works. Uh. Okay, so this is the event here. So, so you can see the band. Sorry, the band blinks. Now it blinks yellow. So actually, right, how this band, the color changes actually con. Uh, sorry? Oh, sorry, I thought something really hey. Okay, so the color depends on the segment of the event. So maybe now it's yellow, then another segment it blinks green and blue and so on. So, okay, I'll show you another video. Okay, so you see now the color, yeah, it's this color. So it changes to blue. Okay? So you change to many colors throughout the event. <coughs> okay, so okay, so of course I'm curious to how this thing works out. So I went online, I searched, then I found out this brand was actually made by this company called Pixmod. There are actually two products here. The first product is called the professional one. It runs on infra. So this is meant for 1,500 to 150,000 attendees. The second product is actually for a much smaller number, 1,500 attendees. So for, since the National Stadium is about 55,000 in terms of capacity, so it definitely has to be the first one, the in front one. So you can see from the picture here, right? Okay, it's not very clear. So what, how this works is that there are actually many in front emitters around the stadium. So at a at, at certain time, right, they broadcast a certain code, and then the, if the band will pick up the code, and then you display the color of the, their choice. Huh? Okay, so I open it. So yeah, I, I told her, so these are the components inside. So I'm going to go through them. The first one here, IR1, this is actually an IR receiver here. So this is how the band receives instructions from the organizers. Which one is it? Yeah. Which model? Sorry, which model? I'm, I'm not sure which model is it. I mean, it's not written there. Okay, so uh, then you have an R RGB LED here. Then the, in terms of the brains of this device, actually this, sorry, here. IC2, above my controller. It's a Korea, made by a Korean company here, this one. Then they surprisingly there's actually an EE prom chip here. So actually uh, there are a, mis a lot of misconceptions. Uh. People think this is a voltage regulator. Uh. But actually it's not. Because I googled the inscription there, it's actually this one. So quite, quite surprising uh, they have a memory chip there. Okay, so then on the back, there's actually a single as axis accelerometer. So at the end of the event, right, you can actually shake the fancy. And I shake the event, yeah, it blinks red. Then uh, yeah, the battery is a CR2032 over there. Okay, so I decided to dig further, la. so I just use my multimeter, and then now see, I can make it change to different lights. Yeah, just tap the, the correct points la, to get the different voltage drops. Okay, this is a simple one. The hard one is this one. So actually, I actually use the multimeter, right? Then I tap all the connections. So I drew this out with high cap here. Okay, so the single axis astrometer is here. The battery holder is here. Infra is here. And the RGB LED is here. Okay. For the microcontroller is this one, and the memory chip is this one here. Okay, so after I drew this out, right, then, yeah, so I just begin to wonder, like, there are actually some programming pads here, S data, SDK, S data, SDK is here, these two. So I believe this is how they program the microcontroller initially. Then there's a two resistors, R2 and R6. I'm not sure why this is for. They connect the VCC in between like that. Yeah, I don't know. Then uh, the surprising thing is that this memory chip E from here, it uses the I2C bus to communicate with the microcontroller. But this microcontroller does not have hardware I2C. So this means, right, whoever actually programmed this board has to actually big bang the I2C bus here. Very okay, interesting. Then uh, the for the memory chip, it's WP pin. WP stands for the right protection. It's set to ground. 
So I look up the data sheet, it means the write protection disabled, which means actually this chip can write something to here. Okay, yeah. So of course I was not satisfied with it, so I wanted to actually use this band. Okay, so the first thing is I aim TV remotes at it. So maybe I can get it to blink other colors. Of course I tried all the remotes in my home and none of them work. Okay, so step number two, maybe we can dump and, as an, dump and analyze the assembly code. But the thing is, I don't have the tools for this, so this option is out. The third way is maybe I can brute force the R code combinations. <laughs> so actually, uh, I created these two here. La. I'll pass this around here. So this is actually a micro view. Yeah. So what it has here. Okay, so this micro view is based on the 80 mega 3 to 8p, same as Arduino Uno. It's an onboard OLED screen. There's an IR LED here. This one. So this will send IR commands to the fan. And then there's a photo cell. Okay, so what this photo cell does is that let's say you send the correct combination, the photo cell can detect this band light up, and then you tell the Arduino here, yeah, okay, I found the correct one. See, but this actually failed, like, I couldn't do it because yeah, there's simply too many codes to brute force, really, possibly trillion, so it's actually not feasible to do it. Like. Okay, so yeah, so potential work, maybe once I get the proper tools, I can dump the ROM, <laughs> or another way is probably can get fixed for to like open source what is the R protocol. But so far they did not do it. Yeah. So yes, that's all for my learning talk. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Questions? Anyone? No one? Okay. Sorry? Supposedly they rewrite the at the end of the event, they okay. rewrite this to behave differently. It does yes. have to behave. Yeah, possibly they send an IR code at the end. And then you have firmware to rewrite yeah, your behavior. Yeah. So next year you have to record actually the message that I sent. So next, next year I should bring an IR recorder there to the event. Uh, <laughs> record, the event record the code. So, <laughs> so going to record Yeah. Actually, I just tell you, actually it's not feasible to do that. Because right, there's a lot of security guards there, and there's metal detectors there. You bring something to tell them and you say that you have a quiz and you want to show them this top video. <laughs> okay, yeah. this, this is the last talk, right? The last one. Yeah. All right, uh, so thanks, King Ming. Uh,